G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Well, today's pattern is for a beautiful memory bear. I have had the best week this week designing this one, but I wanted him to be perfect. Um, and I have made him quite a size. So you're gonna be able to use all sorts of things like shirt fronts, all of your fabric, memory fabrics that you have from clothing. I'm gonna give you so many ideas and uh, I can't wait to see what you all come up with. I have the pattern all ready for you in the video description details below. And uh, also I'll put it number one in the comments for you. And you, all you need to do is print out those pattern templates on your own home printer. You can set your printer to be printing at actual size, that usually works. Otherwise try printing at A4, it depends on uh, where you are in the world things can be a little different, but do use that measuring bar that I have on all of your pattern template pages to make sure that all of your pattern pieces are absolutely spot on. I do, of course, always include seam allowances in my pattern, so you just go right ahead and cut those pieces out and you're ready to go. So speaking of which, let's get started. So let's first take a closer look at my memory bear here. So I've got this little one and he's been made up in um, an old shirt. So I've got an old shirt and I've brought in some other fabrics because I didn't have any memory fabrics to actually bring in. But uh, you get the idea. I've added the right eye color and all that sort of thing. But just to give you an idea, this is such an incredible pattern as far as versatility. So when you're thinking about memory items, remember things like, we tend to think of just upcycling clothing, but what about old chairs? You can take the upholstery from old chairs, something like this. Because the bear, this spare pattern's big enough, it can handle some really heavyweight fabrics, which is beautiful. So you can always think of linens, old recycled linens, tablecloths, Think about uh, grandmother's doilies, all that sort of thing. Lace, of course. Beautiful suiting. Remember men's ties. Uh, and also things like um, a beautiful wedding dress, maybe that's not being seen. You can, you can create the most gorgeous, gorgeous uh, bridal style bear with this one. So, so many ways. I can't wait to see the, the little girl versions of this one. I'm sure you'll do a great job. So let's move on and see what you're going to need. So let's take a look at our materials and requirements needed to make a beautiful memory bear. And of course, these are going to vary so much depending on the fabrics that you've collected. Also, um, as I mentioned, this bear is just an absolutely fabulous pattern to be making up just in fabric. So it could just be a patchwork bear. Um, it could be, I'm absolutely kicking myself that I didn't make it up in um, recycled denims. Um, Denim makes up beautifully in this bear. I actually have a gorgeous denim bear just to show you. This is little Norma Jean and uh, she's made up in a, a variety of different denims and you can see how beautifully they come up. Such a fabulous look. So you can definitely do that. I want one of you to make one up in denim just for me to see because I won't have the time. So, but I'm happy with my uh, little flannelette. It's one of my favorite fabrics. So I'm going to be um, creating minor new fabrics um, because I, don't, I didn't have anything that is a memory type of fabric. I am actually creating this little bear for uh, my husband. My husband asked me to dedicate this bear and call the little bear Brett because he lost his baby brother when they were very, very young, when Brett was very young. So this will be a little memory bear for him. So what I've done is I have cut the front panel. So this is our front, this is our body front. Now the way I've designed this bear is that it has that solid panel front because it allows you to do so much embellishing. Normally bears have a center seam right down the middle. So it's very hard for us to do a whole lot of work on that front panel um, and most work in applique we like to do it flat so this pattern really works well for that so what I've done is I've taken my shirt and I've pressed it buttoned it up and I've actually stitched down each side of that lapel there so that's a solid one piece and then I've lined it up with my pattern piece so that it sits dead center I've also allowed a little bit of room at the top so that button is sitting basically right on the neckline 
and, uh, and left some space here below because this is actually going to curl under there. But you can see it gives you a beautiful shirt front. And the other thing that I've done is I've kept the collar from the shirt. So I'm going to turn that collar into a suitable collar to add to my bear at the end and that will coordinate with the front of that shirt. So that works really well. And you have to remember, you can use children's shirts, you can use, um, you know, colorful shirts, business shirts, anything you like. And of course the collar itself can be really, really embellished. So this is a little um, uh, more of a masculine style bear that I'm doing here. But of course you can absolutely use pretty little collars and add all of those sorts of embellishments to it. So there is my front and I have interfaced that one with my fusible woven uh, medium weight interfacing. And that's all I've done to that one. So it's very, very secure and in place. So my next pieces are my back body back pieces and they are just in another flannel color and you can see there I've cut those in the brown tones and then we have our side body pieces. So this bear is put together in a different way than probably you've seen before but it gives you just such that that, that beautiful very um, strong and it sits very well, um, your joints sit beautifully um, you get a very even bear with this one. It's a really, it's a no fail pattern. This one, this piece here, you could cut just in plain fabric and then add anything you like to it. So you can add patches, your little notions, little keepsakes. Um, think about things like um, the tags on jeans, little jeans pockets. You can add a, you could add a, a full pocket to the front and tuck things in, little memory things. So many things you can do. Um, so those are our body pieces and then we move on to our leg pieces so I've got a different color again now this is my completed stitched up leg there you can see I've gone ahead and used my little heart uh, reverse applique foot pad and that's come up really well so another color of the flannel again so this is what your pattern piece looks like. When you um, get your pattern pieces on your template, you'll see that it's a half. You have to um, create a, a mirror image to create a full pattern piece like this. Much easier to be able to fold that and create the leg this way. So I've got that, that's our leg pieces. And with the foot pads, you can either put in a plain foot pad, which has interfacing applied, or you can go ahead and do what I've done and I've then added my detailing which is a piece of felt with my fusible webbing applied which I press on first and then we've got that lovely detail we can do some gorgeous stitching around here um, on memory bears typically you can put a lot of information on the foot pad you could certainly embroider a name here perhaps a date the sky's the limit really with what you could do there but this is just a great option for a loving, uh, a loving sort of a look there. So that is, those are our legs. And now we're gonna move on to the arms. So we have two inner arms, which have our joint spots. And then we have two outer arms. Again, a different colored flannel. And we have paw pads on this one. So we'll be adding a little paw pad that matches my little foot pad and that will be stitched in and create that little pop of color at the end of the pore. So while we're doing this, I'm going to show you, you may have seen when I flip those over, that on my pattern pieces, I've actually gone ahead. Now this is completely and totally optional, but I would like to work with much thicker fabrics. So I really enjoy that. Now, Please note that all of my pattern pieces are interfaced, all of them, with my fusible woven interfacing. But then I've gone ahead and on my key pieces, so I've done it on all of my arm pieces, I've added a felt piece. You could use fusible wadding. Um, I've used felt because I have so much of it and I've pressed that on. It's got fusible web behind, pressed it on, 
and then I've gone ahead you can see I've done just some quilting lines for two reasons it, it looks really good to have uh, some of that stitching showing and also it's going to hold this felt or wadding in place when we're turning our pieces through and stuffing them we don't want this lifting up and sometimes even with fusible webbing it does lift up so I have done that so on my I've on my arm pieces you can see I've done it on my leg pieces on my back body pieces side body pieces I haven't done it on my front body piece because I've got a double layer there with that shirt front but if I was cutting just plain fabric I definitely would add that wadding piece as well and I will be adding it to the head pieces which I will show you now it's just done a little differently so let's pop all these aside and of course if you're a quilter and you're doing it with um, some very fine wadding you can quilt all of your pieces before we even start to put them together so it's just another way to really um, change up the look of the bear and the bear if it has this inside it just holds itself so beautifully so pop all those aside we've dealt with those now let's have a look at the head pieces and what we have there are our two side head pieces and you know that nice blue flannel and again I have cut my felt wadding to fit those pieces we have the side muzzle pieces which I have cut in felt and uh, my just my interfacing now this is important I've I've seen so many memory bears I've seen a lot of bad ones um, a lot of poorly designed ones and generally if you don't isolate the muzzle area on a bear and make it clear and defined all of your facial fe facial features get a little bit lost they'll get lost so if I just made this bear up all in the tartan and the whole side muzzle in tartan when I went to put my nose on and stitch in my mouth detailing you would just wouldn't be able to define it it just it wouldn't stand out um, and it wouldn't show up so by creating that little nice clean colored muzzle you'll find it'll really pop it really changes the look of your bear so that's what I've done there I do not add my felt extra felt wadding to these two pieces but as I said I have to the head and then we need a center head gusset which I have here that same color and I have my piece ready to go on to the front of the muzzle which we're going to press on so that will complete that nice clear looking little muzzle we're going to press that on and once I've done that I then will be adding my wadding piece to the back and you can see that all of my wadding pieces I've cut to be just about a quarter of an inch smaller than the pattern piece I haven't given you those templates because it would be just so many templates it's easy to see just cut them a little bit smaller they don't have to be perfect you just need room for your seams and we don't want to be sewing this wadding into the seams because it creates bulk in the seams what's going to happen is because we're only stitching on our two layers of fabric with our interfacing when we turn our pieces through they pop out beautifully and they're held out by the back up of this wadding so you'll have to trust me it all comes together beautifully in the end so that's our head gusset pieces and then we will need some ears so the ears we do a little trick with the ears I think you're going to really enjoy that um, so we've got our two ear pieces and I've actually got the two different colors so you can do that you can piece this any way you like you can have two different colored legs two different colored arms I tend to pair them up um, I think we know I'm a bit um, a bit rigid like that um, so we've got our ears there they are both interfaced and no wadding on those I've got my nose template ready cut from leather and that's ready we're going to be stitching over that now for eyes 
I'm going to be using either a 12 millimeter or possibly even a 14 millimeter. I'm going to use blue glass because it works for my project, um, but it can definitely take a larger eye. I wouldn't go larger than 14 mil, and I probably wouldn't go smaller than 12 mil. So it's, uh, you can also use safety eyes in this bear. It will work really, really well because it's got a really good defined head. And now we're going to have a look at our joints because this is a jointed bear and the best bears are. So we're going to start with our neck joint, which is a 50 millimeter neck joint. If you want to have a look at and get some more information on jointing, I'm going to put the link to my video. I've got a couple of videos on jointing. Put the link up the top there for you. Check that out. These are the joints I put together myself. So we've got a 50 millimeter neck joint, we've got two 50 millimeter leg joints and two 40 millimeter arm joints. It's quite a substantial bear in that he's quite solid and stocky. So the other things we're going to need are we're going to need a bit of clear craft glue, we're going to need our extra strong thread, some pearl threads for our nose and mouth stitching and extra detailing. And we're going to be filling with polyester filling, of course. Um, no extra weight needed um, for this one. You can, of course, weight your bear. So another way to um, make a memory bear, other things you can do, you can remember you can always put things inside the bear. So you if you have a really special little trinket memory, you want to keep it as part of the bear, you don't want it to be seen or it doesn't work on the outside of the bear, you can tuck it into that stuffing and you know that it's in there. I can't tell you how many um, commissioned mohair dogs I have made um, and tucked in their beautiful old collar in, 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 within the stuffing and it's, it, it really is a lovely thing to have. It's a lovely keepsake to know that there's a little part of them there so I have also wanted to show you as far as the types of fabrics you can use because most of you will be making this up as a memory bear and you'll be using a variety of fabrics. I've actually just ironed on my woven cotton interfacing onto some stretch t-shirt material here. And whereas before you can't use stretch knits for making a bear like this. If you stabilize it in this way, you can. So you can use all of those baby t-shirts, um, perhaps um, children's, younger children's t-shirts, little, you know, you might have a favorite, they had a favorite t-shirt, had a little bit of a logo on it. You can cut that out, you can back it, and then you've got a nice stable fabric to work with. So what you do to your fabric and whether you add any wadding to your project, it all depends on the fabrics that you're using. You may be already using quite a heavyweight fabric. Just remember your fabrics need to be stable. If you're going to use a stretch fabric, make sure that you back it first. The reason for that is your pieces will shift and change if they stretch. And also when you go to fill your bear, it will continue to grow, it will stretch out and it won't hold itself well. So just keep that in mind. So that's about it. So we can start with our, our body pieces and we're going to start first of all with our back body pieces. So this is our center back and you can see the first thing that I've done, of course I've got my panels all quilted up there I have stitched a zigzag stay stitch on both of those openings. You've got your marks on your pattern pieces there. That will preserve those edges, stop them stretching and stop them fraying throughout um, the whole construction process. So once you've got that done, our first step is to put right sides together and we're going to sew the centre back seam from what is the top of the neck down to that first centre mark. I've made your seam allowance on this bear five millimetres um, and stay with that all the way through so everything fits. And I do sew all of my seams two times and make sure you really back and forth here at the start and finish of your openings because 
we, we add a lot of pressure when we're going to add some filling there. So down to here, back and forth, and then same down to here, right down to the base, and leave this section open. So there you can see I've stitched up that back centre seam, leaving that opening, and I've pressed that seam nice and open and flat. Now before we put the front and back together, now is the time, if you want to do any embellishments at all, add anything, do it now while it's flat. You might want to put patches on the bottom or anything you like, you might be adding all sorts of little things here on the back as well as the front. You can go right ahead and do that now. So next, once you've done that, we're going to put our right sides together and the, this is our neck at the top here. And we're just going to stitch that same five millimeter seam allowance across here. But I want you to leave just enough space here. Just leave a little gap for your neck bolt to go through. So it's much easier to do it now than try and put a, a, a knitting needle through later through that seam. So we just stop and it's probably about just less than a centimeter space that we leave. Make sure that you're really back and forth at your start and finish again and two times there. And then we do exactly the same with the lower edge here. Only this time, of course, we don't leave a space. So two times with that five millimeter seam allowance. So always turn your pieces through whenever you can and roll those seams out. So you can see that's my top seam, got that little space there for the bolt. All rolled out well, pop that back round and we're going to add our side panels. So we take one of our side panels and of course the smaller part goes to the top of the neck. I'm going to take a pin and put it straight through at my five millimeter seam allowance at my mark. Make sure you've transferred all your marks with your pattern. That top seam I flattened out ready. It's like pinning in a big foot pad. So we're going to go straight through that seam at that seam allowance. Make sure it is right through the middle. So immediately I like to just pin a couple either side so it holds in place. So the way I pin it is I pin through both layers, flip it over and take up just a little on the other side and push my pin head all the way down. It's like pinning in 3D, makes all the difference. Pin goes through all your layers, flip it over, take up just a little on that other side, pin head all the way down. So now we go to the base and we do exactly the same there. Pin through that mark. And straight through that seam junction. five millimeters in and I do the same there. I line up. You'll see that it will fit in beautifully and that's also why you need to keep to your seam allowances so that everything does throughout the project. There we go. So now I'm just going to continue pinning and fitting that in. You see how well that fits beautifully. It's like a little peanut. I'm just going to pin that one in all the way around and then I'm going to overcast, tacking stitch overcast that piece into place so that I can remove all the pins. Now once you have that side panel in place, you see I've tacked all the way around with my extra strong thread just with an overcasting stitch and that's held it into place. It means that sewing the seam is much easier. I'm not fighting with pins. I do this every single time. It doesn't matter how long I've been um, working in soft sculpture, I always want my pieces to match up, everything line up and nothing to slip. So it's worth those few minutes to overcast. So now most of this can be sewn on the machine. You'll find you can tuck that under the machine and sew right down to here and the same with the other side. However, I like to hand stitch in the top curves to get them really straight. So the way that I do that is I use a stab back stitch with my extra strong thread. 
and I have a single strand with a knot in the end and I'm going in at my five millimeter seam allowance and I'm coming in from behind. Now I've got a video that shows you how to sew the stab back stitch. I'll put the link up the top for you. But we're really just coming up in from behind and coming back into the hole we just exited from each time. Making my way, keeping my stitches nice and small through all the layers, then back into the hole we just came out of. That way the stitch is completely linked back and front and it's the strongest stitch to use for hand sewing anything in soft sculpture. You can see I'm going to be able to make a beautiful straight seam. Pulling on that thread each time so that it's really nice and taut. You can see I've got a nice straight seam coming along there. And I'm just going to do the top curve and then the lower curve here. And then I'm going to stitch the other sections on the machine and I'll stitch those sections two times. When you're sewing by hand with a stab back stitch with extra strong thread you only need to sew the seam once. So here is how your completed side panel should look. I've turned that through, rolled out all those seams and you can see that's giving us a beautiful little shape there. It's a good time also to add those joint marks, pop those holes through while you have good access there. Make sure that you do that on the other side as well. And then we just turn that one through and we just repeat the process with the other side. And that has my second side panel in and my completed little body which I can now pop aside and we can move on to let's have a look at the arms. So I've got my inner arm and my outer arm here. So we start with the inner arm. Now first of all just as we did on the back openings we do the same with the openings on the arms. Stop that stretch or fraying and we've got our paw pad there. We're going to put right sides together, make sure that it's on the right one so it's your curves are matching and line that up along there and we're just going to stitch that paw pad into place with that same 5mm seam allowance back and forth two times and then what that will give us is our completed inner arm like this. And I've pressed that seam nice and flat. So now we put our right sides together of our outer arm and our inner arm and we're going to line everything up. You can use pins or clips, whatever you like. Now my advice too here is when you're working on your arms and legs, work from the outer panel. So do all of your pinning and all of your sewing on the outer panel. Your inner panel is the one that has the joint mark. That's true of the legs as well. The reason for that is as you pin and sew, the, the, the little body piece will take on the curve of your work. You won't even know you're doing it, but you'll find that if you do that with both sides, what we call mirror sewing, the little arms of the bear will naturally sit nice and even and turn in just slightly and the same with the feet. So often people say, I don't know why I've got one arm that does this and one arm that does this. Um, and it's often because they haven't mirror sewn. So you can sew on the, uh, on the inside panel, whatever you do, make sure you do it with both. If you sew on the inside panel, your arms will tend to tilt out just a little. It's just one of those mysteries, but it's true. So let's get those pieces together. And what we're going to do is we're just going to leave this section open, of course, follow that same procedure of reinforcing our start and finish. And we're going to sew that five millimeter seam allowance all the way around two times. You can go ahead and turn those arms through once you've got them all stitched up and do make sure that you roll all of those seams out because we want a really nice curved pour there. So I've added one of my uh, joint discs in there. I'll show you how I do that. Now if you're using my system of jointing, we actually glue the joints in just with a bit of clear craft glue. 
The reason why I do that, it means I can glue them in and then I can fill the limb, close the limb off the bear. Because then when I go to add that limb and tie up and do up that knot, uh, that nut, sorry, um, that disc isn't going to spin. So I'll be able to tighten it properly. If you're using cotopin joints, not a problem. You can do the same thing, pop them in and uh, they're done up. They can be uh, put on afterwards, no need to uh, glue those in. So I just find it easiest to add my bit of glue and then I pop it in using my forceps. So through that opening, tuck that in there, find that hole and just make sure that you're really pressing all that fabric down around that bolt because the traditional way of making jointed bears was that the joints get put in um, with a lock nut joint and then you add all of your limbs and then you stuff the limbs while they're on the body um, and it's so awkward so this way I just think it just works so much better so there we go we're going to leave that one to dry this one already is dry so we can go ahead and start filling now with this bear this is one of the times where just to the very nature of the bear and the the sort of fabrics you might be making it with uh, a combination of fabrics you don't have to pack this bear super firm i will because that's my preference um, and it's going to work well with the fabrics that i've got here but the, one, the areas that I do suggest that you do still pack firm are always the pore pads. It's always nice to have a nice firm pore pad, but then you can soften off uh, the rest of the arm if you want something a little more cuddly. Um, and again, like I said, it depends on the fabrics that you're using, but I pack the pore pads very, very firm regardless. And same with the feet of my bear, uh, but the rest we can keep softer than a normal artist bear. So I'm going to get that limb packed absolutely full right up to the edge. I will use my wool felting needle to keep those fibres tucked in and then I'll show you how to close that opening. So I have that arm all filled out now nice and firm the way that I like it and I've gone in there with my wool felting needle and just tucked all those fibres in so they're not coming out at me. You can see also by the way that I've filled it nice and evenly, you can already see that that opening is nice and even either side, which means it's gonna pull in well together. So now I'm going to close that opening. I'm using my extra strong thread. It's a single strand and I've got a whole pile of knots there. Whole lot of knots on top of each other. And we're going to go in, we're going to be closing this with a ladder stitch. And uh, I actually do have a video that uh, shows you how to sew the ladder stitch. I'll put the, the video, link to the video up the top there for you for an up close look. But here you can see, I'm just going to be coming in where that seam starts to open out, right at the very beginning. And I'm coming at the seam allowance, our same five millimeter seam allowance. I like to put my thumb up underneath there so it pushes that seam out. So that's our first stitch. And as far as color goes, because I've got a lot of different colours here, darker always works better when you're closing an opening. If you've got multiple colours, go for the darker shade. So I'm going to cross over and I'm going to go straight across into the other side. And I'm going to travel down the length of one stitch and pull that one across. It's probably difficult to see with all this pattern fabric, but pull that in so my one stitch is going across. So now I'm going to travel back again and I'm going to go back into the first entry hole where my knot is behind. Travel down the same as I did the other side. And pull that one in. So you can see as I do that, hopefully you can see that that's just already started to pull that in. Travel back to the other side and each time I'm going into the last hole that I just came out of. Tricky to see, my eyes aren't what they used to be. 
tricky to see with all those colors okay there we go so in that last hole I just came out of travel down keep your stitches nice and even either side so that it closes that opening evenly each time I'm giving that a squeeze and pulling that in it will relax as you go to make your next stitch but you do need to pull on them every single stitch you make so I'm going back into that that exit hole and travel down the same it's important that your stitches are the same length either side so it's closing nice and evenly otherwise you'll end up with puckering at the bottom so so long as I keep squeezing that in as I go and pulling on that thread you can see it'd be quite invisible when that's closed and you don't want to get you know halfway down and then try and pull those, all those threads up they won't knit in well together so I'm just going to continue on right down to the base there till that one's closed so there we go that completes that little arm and now we just repeat with the other one so once that's done we can move on to the legs so let's start with the foot pad so depending on what you're going to do, be doing with your foot pad you may be embellishing your foot pad in a whole different way I've just given you this option because I think it's a really sweet little option given that it's a memory bear to have a little heart there in the foot but any work that you're going to be doing on the foot pad now is the time to do it before we put it into the leg and make sure that it is interfaced whatever fabric you're using whatever special fabric piece you might be using and you know you might be adding something that has a little button pocket um, something a, a special little um, image that was perhaps on a child's piece of clothing might be centered right in the middle just make sure that you do interface it so I've got my interface base of felt and I've got my top piece cut from felt with fusible webbing applied and I'm going to take this to my iron and using a hot iron and a protective cloth I'm going to line that all up and press that one into place so now I'm ready to sew my little reverse applique um, heart shape into place and I'm using my pearl thread it this one is an eight ply I've got a knot in the end just come through the back there and I've come out right on the edge there right on the edge of that heart and so it's just a, a um, blanket applique stitch except for we're doing it on the the outer edge of the heart rather than around the heart shape so it's done in exactly the same way I'll put the link up the top there for for you for my blanket applique stitch tutorial but I'm going to take my keep my stitches quite small I'm going through all of the layers and bringing my needle out right on the edge there and bringing my needle through the loop that's my first stitch and then we're going to keep those stitches nice and even so through all the layers coming out right on that edge and bringing my needle through the loop so by bringing it through the loop it gives us that little stitch that goes across the top there make sure that you rotate your work as you stitch too so that all the stitches are fanning out nice and evenly and there's no slanting there we go one more through all your layers up right on that edge so that's going to frame the little shape of the heart and it's also going to seal those two together so you can see there that's going to come up absolutely beautiful this is our finished leg and you can see that finish is absolutely gorgeous it's nice because it's recessed and even if you do use this um, little detailing for yours you can also add extra on here you can add buttons you can add perhaps somebody's name so many ways to embellish this one I've just my head is full of ideas so I'm going to continue on and go right the way around that heart shape and that has my foot pad ready and I can put that one aside while we just get this leg ready so you've got your leg piece here um, and what we're going to do first of all is the same we've done with all the other, all of our other pieces with openings and I've just 
done that stay stitch of that little zigzag stitch on the openings so now we're going to put right sides together now remember what I said about working on the outer side of the leg so the one with the joint spot that's the inner side so do all of your work on the outside and we're going to pin or clip that one together and we're going to be sewing our five millimeter seam allowance from the toe to the bottom of that opening and then from the top of that opening around to the top edge here where that goes into that fold do sew that one two times and uh, keep it to a five millimeter seam allowance so I'm now ready to add my foot pad into the bottom of that leg there. You can see I've opened up that toe seam there so that's nice and open and flat. And I've put a pin through the centre mark at the top of my paw pad and I'm just going to take that in at the seam allowance of five millimetres all the way through. I'm then just going to line that up. And we're going to pin it in just the same way as we did with the body. So through both the layers, flip it over and take up a little on the other side. Do the same with the other side. Through both the layers, flip it over and a little on the other side. Push that pin head all the way down. Take a pin through the back. All right on that mark at the seam allowance and again through that center mark at the back and I will anchor that one in the same way and so now all I have to do is just pin that one in all the way around just as we did with the side body pieces and I will get that one overcast into place now that I have that foot pad all overcast intact into place it's much easier for me to actually sew that seam. Now what I'm going to do it's quite a big foot pad and you'll find it really will get tucked under the machine. Make sure that you're sewing on the foot pad side. Don't ever try and sew a foot pad in from the from the leg piece always from the foot pad and I'm going to do what I did on the side body pieces where I will just do a little bit of a back stitch stab back stitch in the top and bottom curves just so I know that they're absolutely right and then I will tuck the rest under the machine and stitch that one again two times. You can go ahead and turn that one through, roll all of those seams out. You can see I've gone ahead and slipped that joint in ready just as we did with the arm, glued that one into place and now you can just go ahead once that glue is dry and fill that leg remember what I said about packing the feet nice and firm because they hold themselves and show up your little feature detail here and always around the joint make sure it's nice and firm around the joint get that one filled and close that opening in exactly the same way that we did with the arm so there we go that completes all of our body parts and we can put all of those aside now and we can move on to start work on our head which is very exciting. So we're going to start by preparing our ears because that often helps us do the face detail. So I've got a little trick with the ears here so here we go we've got just the thing is when we make bears out of fabric we are we don't have the benefit of fur that plumps everything out nicely. It's why you can only ever use a, a bear designed for fabric pattern for fabric because otherwise the, all the proportions are wrong. So they need to be quite plump. So with the ear, I thought it would be really nice if we added a little bit of volume in that ear really easily and keep that whole rounded look that this bear is going to have. So it's really quite simple to do. So all we basically do is sew our ear together and then we sew another line in through all the layers and we add some filling here. Now you don't have to do that. You might be working with a much thicker um, fabric than I am here. So you don't need that kind of bulk. Um, but if you are working with just a uh, fabric that is interfaced like I am, you can go ahead and do this. So we've got our two ear pieces. 
put together right sides together you'll see on your pattern templates that you've got marks there either side so we want to sew from these marks make sure you're back and forth we're leaving this section open and we're going to stitch all the way around the lower edge of the ear so keep that seam allowance as small as you can I would say as much as three millimeters we don't want, want much bulk in this section here so about three millimeters all the way around and I still sew that one two times so then you can turn that one through and really make sure you push those corners out and get that all rolled out nice and flat. My next step is to draw in my arch line and I'm using my 40 millimeter disc that's sitting there ready to uh, put my arms on and I'm just going to line that up there. Now you can see it's about a centimeter and a half right the way around it sits so just below there and I've used my heat erasable pen to draw in that little arch line now you need to start drawing it about a centimetre from the base because we need room here to be able to get in to add our filling so a centimetre up on each side and stitch that line into place make sure you're back and forth on the start and finish so it doesn't pull away when we add that filling so now I've got a nice little casing to add some filling to. Now you really will need some small forceps for this to tuck that in there. So I'm open up those layers and this is the little opening there. And I'm going to take that filling in and I'm going to take it all, all the way around to the top center as far as I can make it go. The benefit to doing this to these ears is that not only does it give us that beautiful volume, it also makes it really easy to create a nice curved cupped ear, which looks great on this particular bear. And I'm really packing that quite firm in there. And once I've got this side done, I'm just going to start on the other side until it all meets up in the middle. Now I can come in this side and get it all filled up right the way down to the corners. So there you can see I've got that one nicely filled, beautiful shape there. And another thing that I like to do is, you don't have to do this, but I like it to be sealed. I actually go in between those layers of the ear I take a wooden skewer a little bit of clear craft glue and put it in between those layers to seal that section closed it just helps again adds a little more strength and when we put it on the bear's head and curve it around those two pieces stay together as one you can see I've done that with this one as well it does give it a little more strength which is really good so once that's dry, I will just go ahead and sew across so you can just slip stitch that opening, overcast that opening closed. I actually do a tiny little blanket stitch so that edge is bound and then those ears will be ready to go on the head. So now we can move on and actually start work there on our side head pieces. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to sew our side muzzle pieces in place. So with right sides together, we're going to line those up. Very important that these pieces are on absolutely correctly because the muzzle is the focal point of your bear. Get those all lined up into place and we will sew that five millimetre seam allowance two times down both sides. I have now pressed those seams nice and flat and facing backwards on both of those. So my next step is to line up those two side head pieces and we're going to sew our center front chin seam. And I always like to overcast this one first because I want it to be perfect. And I'm going to sew from the nose down to the neckline two times. Turn that one through and roll those seams out and open that front nose seam and press it nice and flat, finger press it nice and flat. That's our lovely front muzzle section. And so now we're going to add our front nose section to our head gusset. So this is felt 
in the same color as I have here and it has fusible webbing on the back and I'm going to fuse this one into place at the end of the muzzle there with a hot iron and a protective cloth. So once you have that nose section pressed into place, you need to go ahead and stitch that top arch in some way. So you can do it on the machine with a close zigzag satin stitch if you like. I've gone ahead and sewn it with that same pearl thread that I used on those feet. So it's just bringing that all in together. Also, I'm actually uh, using blue eyes, so that's all gonna tie in really well. So that's in place and because I'm using that extra felt wadding on the back of mine, I've added that piece there, but I've only done it from the back of that nose section because I don't want it, I don't want three thicknesses there. So, because I've already got it on the front and I've stitched those into place there. So this one's all ready to go into our side head pieces now. And this is probably the most important part of your bear, getting this section nice and straight. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the foot pads in that we're going to take our pin through the center mark and straight through that center seam. This is the first thing that people see when they look at your bear. So it's good to get it right. So again, I'm pinning through all the layers and taking up just a little on the other side, pushing that pin head all the way down. So now I've got those even, it's about lining up the rest to meet with your mark. So you've got a mark on your side head pieces and you've got a mark on your center head gusset and that should meet right where that um, head gusset starts to fan out. Make sure that they're really anchored into place. Get that one all pinned into place and then overcast. So just the nose section. Those pins are all out the way now and now I can really see what I'm doing to sew in a lovely straight muzzle. So I'm using my extra strong thread now in a matching colour to my muzzle and it's just a single strand and I've started with two very strong stitches here for my stab back stitch. It's the same one that we used before and I'm coming up from the underneath and back into that hole. Keep those stitches nice and small. I always hand sew those front nose sections in on everything that I make. It's such an important little section of your animal. Each time coming from the underneath to take your stitch and then going back into that stitch you just came out of and that is a five millimeter seam allowance. And you can see I can keep that seam just as straight as if I was machine sewing it. But you just can't get this under the machine, not for a successful tidy finish. So I'm going to just stitch right the way around to the same on the other side, that other mark that we have there. Always turn that nose section through once you've stitched it to make sure that you've got that exactly right and straight. You haven't missed anything there, so then we can pop that one back through and now we're just going to continue with the side head pieces and these can be sewn on the machine but I do like to overcast them first it just makes it easier and again keeps everything nice and rounded now this is a fairly blocky style head on this bear but we don't want any Herman Munsters so do make sure that when you're sewing these side head seams that you are keeping it nice and rounded, no stops and starts, which is what causes that, uh, that little dent in the head that you see sometimes. So be as fluid as you can with your sewing. So I'm just going to get that one pinned into place. You'll find that will meet up perfectly down the bottom if all your seam allowances are right. It will meet up perfectly there, so I will stitch that one two times on the machine and then I will just repeat with the opposite side. So now you can turn that head through 
and check that all your seams are right and now we can go ahead and start filling. Now what I want to tell you about filling teddy bears heads is there's a few there's a few areas that people often miss. So the parts you have to watch is obviously your front muzzle section. You need to pack that really firm because you've got all of your nose detailing to go on there and your mouth and it will go on better, will be easier for you if you have a nice firm packed muzzle. The second area that people seem to miss is between the, not the eyes, the eyes do sit in there, but it's right here where that muzzle starts to pull out. So there you need to make sure you pack that area and these top curves here. Make sure that you get your forceps or your stuffing tool right in up there so those top curves are filled out nicely. So now I'm going to go ahead, now I tend to fill this one by hand largely to get everything where I want it to be first of all because it's a good size so I can get my hand in there and really fill that one out and then when I've got everything where I want it to be then I start adding more packing in with my forceps. Do use your wool felting needle for packing areas. Once you get that muzzle section all filled out I take my wool felting needle and I pack it all in there so it's not coming back out at me. So stuffing is something that uh, practice makes perfect for sure. So get that one filled up to just about a centimetre from that neck edge and use your wool felting needle to pack it all in nice and flat. There we go, you can see that head all filled, absolutely no give there at all. And you can see we've got a beautiful rounded, still a blocky style head, but everything's nicely rounded. So pay attention to those areas I said. I've packed that all in with my wool felting needle and I've got that all nice and flat and ready to take that neck bolt. And I have now taken a doubled strand of extra strong thread and I've sewn a running stitch all around that neckline, just about half a centimetre in. I've tied a preliminary knot because I've left my tail ends hanging. And so now I can just take that neck bolt, slip that in, and I'm just going to draw that in around that bolt. And here's where often you need somebody to help you because you do need somebody to put their finger on that knot so you can pull those edges in as close as you can to that bolt. Once you've done that you just need to knot that off about four times and snip those thread ends. So there we go, I've just got my little bear sitting on a, a little empty tape roll there. I find that really easy, a good way to sit them so you can have a look at their face detail. So there we go, he's all filled out and I've just temporarily popped his pinned his ears somewhat into place so it gives me an idea of my nose placement and you can see that the eyes sit basically, it's very easy eye placement on this bear because they sort of really have to go right on that apex there at the base of that, uh, that little arch area there. So providing your stitching is all nice and straight they should just sit there really well. If you are using safety eyes you would need to temporarily fill the head check your eye placement, pop them in, uh, sorry, unstuff your head, pop those uh, safety eyes in, restuff your head um, because of the way that they're attached. If you're using shank buttons or buttons or proper teddy bear eyes like I am, then we put them in afterwards. But this is just giving me an idea of where my nose needs to go. So I am now going to add that nose template which I've cut in leather and I have some liberally coated with clear craft glue there. Now where this one sits is actually it has a little fold over over the top of the nose. So I'm going to just get that one into place. I just want to make sure it's exactly right. So you line up that point with your beautiful straight chin seam and you're going to fold the top over just over the top of that nose there. And I'm using the palm of my hand. It'll start warming that glue and start to stick that in place. We really need this template to be fully secure before we start stitching. Now if you're feeling nervous about stitching a nose 
Um, it's another one of those things with bear making that practice definitely makes perfect. You could just add a template or perhaps a template I've given you, cut it in double felt and sew just that blanket applique stitch around it and then add your mouth details after that. You can definitely do that. Um, I hate plastic noses. I think that a, a, you know, a felt nose looks way better on a, a, on a bear that you've spent all this time making. Much nicer to stitch something on than add something all full and plastic. So try and avoid that. And alternatively, you can do like a little vintage nose, a fairly threadbare little nose intentionally, like it's been, like it's an oldie bear. So just a few threads across, that can look really cool. So depending on the fabrics that you're using, that could look really good, a little vintage look. But you see that I've given you a little bear with a very broad head. So sewing a nose on this bear is going to be really, really easy. So I'm going to keep pressing on that even while it's drying so that it's really sitting in the right place and all those edges are adhered. And I will come back when that is completely dry. So I have a nice dry nose template now and I'm ready to stitch that nose. So what I have here is I've got my large doll needle because it's a fairly significant size head and I've got a doubled strand of my pearl thread and I've taken the ends of my double strand through that, the eye of that needle. Now the reason why I've done that is if I make a stitch wrong I can pull my needle off, remove the last stitch, then re-thread it without losing all the work that I've already done. So that's why I do it that way. Um, and I'm using five ply this time because um, it's a fairly decent sized nose and I want, it's a fairly plain bear, so I want a thicker sort of uh, a grin on my bear. So I've started off where I've come in underneath the neck a bolt here to hide that knot, the knot in the end. Then I've come out here in the face, gone back into that hole and travelled my way to about, it's probably about six millimetres from the base of that nose. That will differ depending on where you've glued your nose template. But don't make that top, what I call the top lip of the bear, too long because it really alters the look of your bear. So now I'm going to bring that out and I've brought it out right on that seam line. So I can pull that all the way through and I've got my double uh, threads that are nice and strong. So from here I'm going to take my threads and I'm going to make sure that they are not twisted and line them up straight up the top centre of the nose. Pulling them nice and tight there. And my needle I'm going to put in right at the top edge of that template there. So I'm going to dive in there, but where I'm going to come out is just this side down the base of the template so that I'm ready to add my next stitch. So you can see where I've come out there right on that base. So now I can pull up that second stitch. Again, you want to make sure that those nose threads aren't twisted and also on your first stitch take both those threads and pull on them independently so that they're both really anchored in and you'll find that your template will pull down a little that's that's fine that's also why we need it to be very dry before we start working on it so now my needle is going to go in right next to that one at the top this time i'm going to come out this side of that lip line there, so the other side. So we're going to work stitch by stitch, working outwards like this. So there you can see I've come out on the opposite side on the lower edge, exactly the same lining that all up. Again, I've pulled it independently on those threads and made sure they're not twisted. And now I'm going to do the same thing again, line that up. I'll be taking my needle at the top and then it will be coming out. We've gone back to this side, just a little further up the template. So as you go, 
obviously the nose is working its way up the sides. If you follow that template, you really can't go wrong. And it, and it is better to do it side to side than sewing one, not, one side first and then the other. Um, this is the best way to get an even stitched nose. So I'm going to keep going until that template is completely covered. And when I get to my final stitch, I'm going to show you how we put in our mouth line. So here I have my template all covered and I'm ready to put in my final stitch, which I will drop in at the side there. And I will go in at the top. But where I'm going to come out, now I want to create a, a little mouth line. Smile, it increases your face value. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to come out here where I've put a pin there to mark it. You can test your smile by putting your pin there and pulling it up to the front. And you can see whether that's, that's the right sort of angle that you're looking for. You can make it small, you can make it huge, you can make it deeper, whatever you like. So I'm gonna pop that last one in, making sure that's not twisted. And I will come out at the side of that mouth. So you can see I've come out at the corner there and now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to slip it under those first two stitches that we made in the nose. I'm not catching any of the fabric. I'm going straight under those stitches. That's going to allow us to pull in a really nice mouth line. And you really want to give that stitch some curve. Place that stitch. Make sure those threads aren't twisted and you can really give it some tension. You want to pull that in and then match it up on the opposite side. Dive in there, exit out the back base of the head and not off there, but keep the tension up so you get some really nice pull in on that mouth line. So there we go, I've got my completed nose and mouth and you can see that I've gone in after that is all done, come up from behind just the same way that I did my nose stitching and I've added a nice uh, crossover of red and blue and that's just to mimic my fabric and you can see it's just brought that all in together. I will be adding some uh, gel medium to that nose when we're done but I'm going to add the eyes first. Now I've already selected my eye position using my eye tester pins there and it really is right on the apex there right where that little template starts to fan out right on the corner. Eye position is everything um, so take your time with it. So I've then gone ahead and made my holes and enlarged them with my knitting needle, ready to take those eyes. Um, and now I was going to do a little tutorial on my masterclass because a lot of people have been saying they're having trouble getting their eyes sunk nice and deep. I'm going to show you a trick that's going to help you with that and take the pressure off of all that pull on those eyes. I'm going to be using my blue glass um, eyes. If you want your colour to stand out more when you're using eyes like this, you can pop a little circle of off-white or white felt behind them and it'll really bring that colour out. However, that does tend to make the eyes very stark and quite starey, so I don't want that. Um, this is a rare occasion where I'm going to use my glass eyes, coloured glass eyes, and doing nothing to them. I'm just going to sink them. I think it's working well with this project. And I am using the 14 millimeter in this case. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to show you here is a technique. It, it is needle sculpting. I've got a double strand of extra strong thread here and I, um, it's quite long and I've got it on my doll needle. And I'm going to go in at one of those eye holes. I'm going to travel across. I'm not catching the fabric, just the stuffing. That's very important. We're going to needle felt the stuffing. So I'm coming out the other side again, not catching the fabric. I've got a big knot on the end. Hopefully that will hold well enough. Probably have to pass through a couple of times first to really get some hold there. Turn that round. I'm going to dive back in again. Travel across again and come out the other side. 
being careful again not to catch any of that fabric we don't want to be pulling the fabric in just the filling so I can feel that's holding now so I'm going to go again and as you go try and travel a different path if you understand what I mean um, so that you're gathering in that filling you're not just going straight through that same uh, cavity that you just made so now I'm on my third time through so I should be able to do a bit of pull in here and have everything hold so what I want to do hard to show you I'm going to give it a good squeeze really squeeze that in keep that tension up I'm going to go back across so basically I'm pulling all that filling in and making basically a nice deep little pocket for those eyes which means when I go to sink them I don't have to pull so hard when I'm doing that it's traveling back and forth I'm sure this looks awkward it's awkward because I'm trying to do it on camera it's not awkward <laughs> pull that in and each time I'm keeping that tension up and really pulling that in so you're basic, basically doing all your pull-in work now you can see that already that's really transformed that little top nose section it's squeezed it in beautifully so I'll do a couple more so there you go I've just passed through there probably about seven times back and forth and squeezing in and pulling on those threads as I go and it's just pulled those in I've still got my little eye spots perfect ready to add my eyes but it's already done most of the pull in for me so I'm just going to dive back in and come out at the base of the neck and tie that one off keeping up that tension all the time so there you go that section there all nicely pulled in on the underneath so when we go to pop those eyes in now there's a nice little pocket there for them to sit in we don't have to put all that pressure on the eyes so let's get our eyes threaded up we've got a double strand of extra strong thread doubled and then I fold it in half so what we've got is four strands I'm going to take that loop fold it in half we're going to pass it through the shank of the eye open up that loop and take the four ends through so we've got our eye safely on those four strands do use four strands when you're adding eyes it needs to be that strong so then you thread that up on your needle I've got the other one ready here and we're just going to go straight into that eye hole and we're going to dive all the way through and we want to come out at the center right down low at the back of the head there we go pull that one all the way through and take it off the needle I'm now going to take my awl and enlarge that hole that we just came out of there just so it's easier for my needle to find when I'm adding the second eye I'm using my awl never ever cut the surface fabric we're just opening the fibers so there we go we've got that first eye in position there and now I'm going to thread the other one on to my doll needle I'm going to go straight in there and I'm going to bring my needle out through exactly the same hole there we go so I've got both of those threaded through they're both coming out that same hole I've tied a preliminary first knot ready to tie those off and now all I need to do and you can see because I've done that needle sculpting they're they're actually just sitting there and they're already nicely sunk so I only have to put a little bit of pressure on tying those off to get a really really good result so it's a nice little masterclass tip there for you all so I'm going to pull those in and I'm going to apply pressure with my thumbs squeeze that in tie that off remember we're tying it off onto the stuffing we're not tying it off onto the fabric 
and knot that off at least four times. Keep that tension up, snip those thread ends and your thread ends will be lost into the back of the head into that stuffing. So let's add some beautiful gloss to this nose uh, and there you can see those beautiful eyes there sunk. Lovely. So uh, we're gonna, I'm going to add some gloss to this nose and I'm using an artist gel medium. So it comes in many brands, do buy an artist quality. I've put the name in your materials and requirements and this is totally optional but it's such a beautiful finish to your bear and it gives a bit of shine and the added benefit is that it'll hold all of your stitches. So you can manipulate your stitches, get them exactly lined up right, remove any little stuffing fibres and then we're just going to use, I just use a nice soft brush. It's always white and it dries clear and we're just going to apply that quite liberally to those stitches and work that product in. It dries quite quickly. You can also build up coats of this depending on how much shine you want. But you can see I'm really working it into those stitches. But definitely use an artist quality gel medium. I know that some teddy bear suppliers sell something they call nose gloss. Please don't use that, it's awful. An artist product is always going to be better. And a pot like that will last you forever. And it has a, so many uses. I think already in Masterclass I've used it several times for things other than noses. So I'm just going to work that in and then we will put that aside to dry and then we will start putting our little bear together. Okay so let's start putting this bear together. So I've got all of my little body parts here ready. You want to make sure that you're adding the, uh, I start with the legs with this one. Make sure they're going the right way facing forwards and we're going to pop, you've already got the holes made in your side panels, pop that bolt through or that cotter pin through. We can get in there and add that corresponding disc. And then washer and that nut. using cotter pins you will just wind those down until it's as tight as you like. I always like to finger tighten it first and check that I've got nothing caught up in between those layers, those discs there. Tighten that up. I've got my spanner ready. I will go ahead and tighten that until I'm happy with uh, it it being nice and firm. They always slacken off your joints because after a while everything compresses together. So it's always better to make them a little too tight. Now you can see there we've got some movement there so I'll make that tighter. You want to just be able to shift it and then that generally that's about right. Once I've got that right I will go ahead and I will add because I'm using my nut and bolt system I will add one little drop of super glue right in that th in on top of that nut so that little nut will never come away. There we have little headless bear and so finally just going to add the head that nose gel is dried beautifully there. Just going to pop that one on through that top little hole we left there. Flip that over. Add that disc. Washer. I dropped it inside his head. There we go. Inside his body. There. Washer and nut. Again, I'm just going to finger tighten this 
I tend to make my neck joints not quite so firm because of the posability. Finger tighten that one. Check that everything is pulled out of that next section. This little bear joints up so beautifully just because of those side panels. And I can see you've got that lovely neckline there. Okay, so same thing, tighten up, add that little drop of super glue and we will be ready for stuffing. So now let's get him filled up. So as far as your filling goes, depending on the look you're going for and also the materials you've used for making your bear, this is where you can soften it all off. If you want a more of a huggy sort of a bear, you can keep this filling quite soft. However, do make sure that you always fill out around the joints. So make sure that neck is well supported and also around each joint and particularly around the base of your bear and then go ahead and get that one filled up. I'm going to pack mine really firm and, uh, and I'm going to be filling right up to that back opening and I will still use my wool felting needle to pack that in as I go and we will come back when that is all ready for that opening to be closed. So there we go, that has my little, my little deaf bear very well filled out. Um, I've just left a little bit of give in that body and now we're ready to close that back opening. And uh, you can use a curved needle for this if you like. I like to start off with my straight needle. I've got my extra strong thread and a single strand. There's a fly, go away fly and I've come in with that very big knot as we do. So closing the opening is exactly the same as we did with the arms and the legs. Just traveling down either side, taking your stitches with that ladder stitch. But sometimes it's easier to use a curved needle because you can really tuck it in. So a little curved needle like this, I usually replace my, replace my straight needle with a curved needle, make my way down and then finish off back on the other needle again. So I'm going to get that one all closed up, nicely finished. So now our little bear is all closed up and ready for his ears so that he can hear us. So what I've done there, the most important part about sewing ears on, I know it's not a fun job, it just isn't. Um, but it's something that you, it gets easier as you go along. So the most important part about adding ears is pinning, which is true of most things in soft sculpture. So first of all, you want to anchor in the front part of your ear. Now remember, I'm using the ears that have the filling. So I've got a really nice curve there happening already. Your ears might be just two pieces joined together. That's fine. It's all pinned in the same way. So because this is quite thick here, I've added two pins at the front there and I've actually gone straight in to this seam line here, which is where they tend to, the starting point sits really well there. When you put them in, when you put your pins in, you want to over angle your pins to be going the other direction and then pin in. So you're helping that ear to lean this way. This is the crucial part for getting a beautiful curved ear. Your next pin should be around about two centimetres behind and it needs to be following that seam line. So straight across. It doesn't seem right when you do it, but you're actually going to pin that in there and really anchor that in. So now that that's anchored in, anchored in now when we pull that ear around, we get a beautiful cupped curved ear. If you try and do it just by pinning it around, you never get that curve. You end up with two ears that are sewn on straight like this. We want that beautiful curve. So you've got to tuck it in behind first and then pull it around. So now I can pull that around and anchor that lower edge because I'm using those, those very thick ears. I need a few pins there to do that. And that's pulled that ear around and cupped it beautifully. And I can take my pins from behind and then 
pin that lovely curve into place. You can see what a beautiful shape that is. I do like that little bit of stuffing in the ear. And another thing that I will say when we're talking about stuffing in ears, the very worst look I think is when you just sew up an ear and then you add filling to it and sew it and you try and add a, just a puffy stuffed ear. It just has no dimension. So making that little cavity makes all the difference. You see that beautiful cup shape. So there we go. That's the trick of pinning ears on to get a gorgeous curve. And of course, you might not want your, those ears to be sitting there. You, you might not want them higher on the head. You m may want them coming out the side a little more. You can really personalise your bear. This is a very classic look. So now all I need to do is pin that all the way around the base and then match it up on the other side, pin the other ear on as well. Now, this is really important because you have to pin both your ears on at the same time to get them exactly right before you start sewing them on. The reason for that is you can't just pin one ear on and then sew it on and then try and match up the other side because the ear will look different and sit differently once it's sewn on and then you'll be matching it up incorrectly if you understand what I'm saying. So pin them both on at the same time and sew them both on and then they will both end up exactly the same. Okay, so now that I've got both those ears pinned nice and evenly, evenly into place, he's looking you dead in the eye there, isn't he? Okay, so we're going to start to sew them on. I'm gonna show you the easiest way to, to sew them on. I've probably shown you this a few times before, but it won't hurt to show you again. So my method of sewing ears on is different to most people's. Most people will try and just tack it to the surface of the head. You don't get a good, nice upright ear that way. I actually needle sculpt them into the head and it's much easier. So we start with our extra strong thread and I've got a really long thread. I've got a nice knot in the end and I've got my medium sized doll needle. And I've come in at the back of the head here taken my needle in where I'm aiming to come out is right where my pins are sitting in the base there on that seam line. You want to bring that out right on that spot. And I'm going to pull that one all the way through. I have a knot in the end here. And I'm just going to enlarge that hole just to pull that knot through. And hopefully it will hold on the other end. It will. So my next step, I've got my thread coming out here. I'm going to dive into that ear right on the corner and back into the head. And I'm going to come out just somewhere at the back of the head. It doesn't really matter where. And that's going to anchor my first stitch in place. Now, each time you go back into the head, you want to go back into the same hole you just came out of. That way we're not leaving stitches on the surface of our bear's head. So now I'm going to come out again right on the edge and I'm going to do a good three stitches on that first anchor point. So the front of that ear is really well settled in. Again, in and then out behind the back of the head somewhere. And hopefully you can see that's that's pulling the front of that ear in, sculpting it in really nicely. So a good three stitches here, and you do the same, a good three stitches on the base. So you can see I'm going back into that hole that I just came out of. I'm gonna come out again, right there on that start. all the way through, really pulling that in. Dive in again. And out the back again. 
So now that front of that ear is perfectly pulled in and it's not going anywhere. So those are your two key points. So now I will continue that process going back into the hole, but each time I'm just going to move a little further along and take up some of the ear, then back, back through again, take up some of the ear and I'll work my way around that entire ear curve at the back. You can see I've got that all pinned into place. When I get down to here, I will do those same three anchoring stitches that will pull that lower edge of the ear in and you can see that beautiful tension keeps up that lovely cupped shape. Perfect little ears cast off somewhere down the back of the head where it won't be seen. And then all you need to do is do the same on the other side. So there we go and that has my completed little Brett bear complete with beautiful bright blue eyes that Carl's little brother had lovely blue eyes. So this is my memory bear uh, made for my memory person. I wonder who you will make yours for. So I am actually really excited. I think that this pattern is going to bring out some absolute really amazing unique and original work. I can't wait to see all of it all of your fabrics and memories and um, remember too that you can make this up I can see this bear being made over and over and over it's such a great pattern and uh, it's such a fabulous size it's really a handful so I hope you've enjoyed it and I thank you so much for joining me well I hope you've all enjoyed seeing this one come together and I hope I managed to fill the brief I hope he was what you were all looking for um, and I'm really excited to see what you all come up with. And thank you so much to all of my new patrons in Masterclass. Have you joined yet? Why don't you come over and check it out and come and join me in Studio 2 to make some more uh, advanced projects um, and just learn so many different techniques. We've got a lot going on over there. I will very soon be announcing next week's sorry, next month's project in Masterclass. It's very exciting. So you need to be following our Facebook page and you'll see that sneaky peek coming up next week. Um, and I will put the link to my Masterclass and the link to our Facebook page down below also for you. So I'm looking forward to what you're coming up with with this one. I think there's gonna be a lot of amazing original bears coming up on Facebook. So. I'm really excited about seeing them. Thank you all for being so patient with me. Um, but it's business as usual now here at Pay It Forward. So stay tuned. And next week we will be having a uh, masterclass announcement and a giveaway again. Don't miss the giveaway. So polish up on all of your movie quote knowledge. Um, I'll be giving away another mohair pack. So very exciting. So everybody stay safe. Everybody keep being creative and keep talking to me. I love to hear from you. Most of all, pay all those good things forward in your life. And uh, until next time, it is hooroo from me.